وإني من المسلمين الحمد لله we're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be together tonight and I am so grateful to Allah that tonight we have Abdurrahman Sheikh Abdurrahman from Sudan with us and you know his brother Sheikh Muhammad and I'm grateful for your visit and being with us inshallah I'm sure many brothers will be sad they were not here tonight because I mean, they thought I'm yes. not going to be here uh, I'm sorry also I missed last week the week before and the week before that uh, I was busy and I am been traveling but alhamdulillah tonight we are here and I want to just talk briefly because we talked we were waiting for the sheikh to come we were talking before about dhikr but what I really came to talk about tonight is a special subject that each one of us need to take seriously and need to reflect upon when you go out of the mosque tonight because it is what it is we are very lucky as Muslims to be living in this country so lucky in fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a lot of success in many areas given us success that many of us come from places where there is war, no peace we have found peace in this land many of us come from areas whereby there is drought okay, and there is no food and we find food in this land many of us come from areas whereby we have no education nor work and we have found work and education in this country many of us were in fact in difficulties wherever they were living and in this land the difficulties were removed it doesn't mean in this land everything is perfect there are problems there are difficulties but they were subhanallah compared to those difficulties of other places are minor but with that come a responsibility that responsibility is for us not to think that we have come from our countries because of seeking a job or seeking knowledge or seeking okay to live a life for this world but we have come here as a representative of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to carry out the torch that he brought okay allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the quran okay we have sent you as a shining light to the world okay wa sirajan munira a shining lantern or a shining light to the world now that shining lantern shining light okay has not been distinguished it's not been put down it is still running but running in the heart of those people who follow muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and love muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and therefore when we gather and we read a lot of salat for the first salam the idea is in this day and age in these lands whereby the majority of the people have left the path of god has left religion and they even went to a position whereby to deny god at all we need to manifest that light of Muhammad yes. and the manifestation of the light of Muhammad can only come by us increasing salawat for Muhammad so I'm grateful to all of you I'm so thankful you come to the mosque and you sit down and you are reading salawat so each one of you need to go out and carry on reading the salawat for the Prophet as much as we can however while we are here Alhamdulillah some of us got married, some of us have children, some of us have gra grandchildren. I mean. Now with that comes the responsibility of that light because now we are becoming in a, a position whereby we are carrying the responsibilities of families. Now as we know, families today are being shunned by many people. Marriage is being shunned by many people. They don't think marriage is important and they don't think having a family is really important. And that is dangerous. And we as Muslims, we must think of the family. But unfortunately, the family today in Islam is going through a difficult time. Out of eight marriages among the Muslims who are married in Britain today, one to three will be divorced within the first year. One to three. And it is sad. Yani, this is really, really quite a lot. When I think about it, this is a lot. When you find three marriages being divorced, it's not good enough. We need to think of solutions of how we can come out of this difficulty and these troubles. Okay? It is not good enough for anybody to think that يعني, uh, these troubles are all right. They're not all right. And most of them are made by us not understanding marriage, not understanding how to raise children. Now, let me give you another statistic. If you look at London, a quarter of the population of the prisoners between the ages of 18 and 24 in London 
are Muslim. 25% of the prisoners are Muslim. From the old comers and the new comers, from the Indians and the Pakistanis who came earlier, to the new comers, like the Sudanese and the Somalis and the Egyptians and the North Africans and the Iraqis and the rest, Afghanis, whatever, all of them, plus the convert Muslims. Among the native people who converted, many of them are in prisons. I was absolutely amazed when I went to one of the prisons to celebrate the seerah of Muhammad Sallam with the prisoners there. When I went to the mosque, I was delighted. In a prison, there is a mosque bigger than this hall. But then I was shocked when it was full. Initially, I was happy to see a mosque. MashaAllah, a mosque in the prison. But then I was shocked to see the mosque filled. Because when I looked at it, I asked somebody, I said to him, how many people come to this mosque? He said, well, all the Muslim prisoners come. How many there are? I said, 400. And how many prisoners in the jail? This is 1,600. That's 25%. 400 out of 1,600 are Muslim prisoners. They're aged between 20, 18 and 24 years old. That is a loss for the Muslim community. And if we go outside London, the average is between 12 to 15%, which is very, very sad. So that means... There is a failure in us making sure that the marriage we went into is the right marriage. And there is a failure in not learning and understanding that the family is vital in Islam. It's important. It's the backbone of the society. And we need to make sure this family is looked after and cared for. This is really important. It's not a joke. Now, I come back again. We have now, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, in London, over 400 mosques. Okay? All these mosques are either in the community or in colleges, universities, schools, prisons, name it. Even the House of Lords have a Jum'ah prayer held every Friday. <coughs> even the House of Lords. But with that, subhanAllah, with that, there are a lot of difficulties and troubles. Because a lot of these institutions are not sorting out the difficulties that arise outside. Okay? in the community, the social problems. There are too many social problems. I promise you, the least I have faced in the social problems outside is one person come to me and sit in front of me and says to me, okay, well, I'm finding it difficult to find a job. Or I'm finding it very difficult, okay, to find a place to live. I'm looking, but I can't find another place. That's easy. <coughs> it can be sorted out. It can be... But the most difficult when you hear a child has run away from their home because they are having difficulty with their parents. Their parents are beating them up. Or a wife who have run away and gave herself to the authority because her husband beats her at home. Or a husband whom, who is working very hard and goes home and he finds his wife no longer there. She has taken the children and run away. These are difficult problems. How can we face those problems? Or in many cases... There are things that you cannot even imagine. There are too many difficulties in the communities and problems that we put under the carpet. We don't want to talk about them. We shell them. We talk, we are Muslims, we are good, we have no problems. But brothers, let us wake up. As some people say, smell the coffee. We have problems, seriously. Um, we yeah, have big yeah. problems in the yeah. community. Yeah. We have social problems that yeah. it will make the hair of the old yeah. man not go gray, become black again. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's really serious. You yeah, are going yeah, to be the solution for these problems by making sure that those who are amongst you not married learn how to get married. And by the way, to get married is an art. You don't just go and get married to the person whom you look at and just imagine like somebody who's so foolish, goes shopping, work very hard, have got money in his pocket, the very shining shoe, a glittering shoe, will just say, I want this one. Doesn't matter how much it costs. Then he wears it and then it is aching or paining his feet. Not the right fitting. Or it's suddenly not the right material. You can't just buy. Or you pass the most beautiful house and you buy. You don't do it. Or the most beautiful car and you buy. No. You buy that which is suitable and that which is according to your means. And therefore for marriage, we need to pick the woman that is practicing her religion. And in that, mainly praying her five daily prayers and covering herself. These are the two duties a woman should have. A woman who's covering herself properly and a woman who's praying her five daily prayers. It's a good woman. 
And in the case of a woman choosing a man, a man must be praying his five daily prayers and being able to look after himself and sustain somebody else with them because he's responsible. And he does not touch alcohol ever. He should not be touching alcohol. These are the three rules for the man. If any man who's so good drinks, no good. Because while he's drunk, he could beat his wife. He could kill her. He could rape her. He could do anything. I will not allow my daughter to marry a man like that. That's it. And if he doesn't pray, how do I expect the children to be praying later on? The children will not be praying. So he must be praying. He must be holding a job. And he must be far away from that which will make him drunk. Okay? Or intoxicate him by taking drugs, whatever. All these things you find in the young people today. The second thing, once you find your right partner, you must go out of your way to learn the responsibilities of a husband and the responsibilities of a wife. Many people don't know these responsibilities. Seriously. And they think it's, it's, not, it's not important. It's very important. And I know some men who get married, they bring the wife home, and they don't go and do shopping. And they expect... That woman should suddenly just put her hand in the air, get the shopping and cook for him the food. When he said, what is the food? But he didn't buy any shopping. You don't expect her to go and buy for you. You're not living with a colleague in university. Okay, sharing a flat or whatever, so that you're sharing and putting things together in the fridge and that's it. No, this is something really serious. Also, wives who do not understand that the responsibility, once they have children, they have to look after those children until they are able to go to school. You can't just leave the child and say to the husband, you leave your job and come and look after the child. I want to go to university or go to do my job. This is what is happening today in the community. This is exactly what is happening. The divorce is happening because the wife is coming and saying, he's not allowing me to do this. And he is saying, she's not doing this for me. But it is pathetic sometimes when I hear the husband saying, well, she doesn't clean and press my trousers. That's not important. Really, it's not important. Or she does not cook for me. There are people who divorce their wife because they don't cook for them. Astaghfirullah You did not marry a slave or a domestic servant. You married a partner. Her role is to look after the household and if Allah gives her children, is to raise the children. Because she's gentle and lenient and compassionate. That's her role. So let's understand this reality. Kana Rasulullah sallam yakhdumu ahlahu. He alayhi abdala salatu wa salam used to serve his family. Kana yarqa'u thawbahu. He used to mend his clothes. He used to mend his shoes. He used to milk his own goat. You come from work, you put your feet on the table, the feet have got mud in them, they dirty the table, you expect the wife to, to clean the table and to brush the floor and to cook the meal, put it on the table and take the dirt and go and wash it again. And if she doesn't do it, she's not a good wife. Astaghfirullah That is not her role. Wake up. Remind your friend, remind your brothers, remind everybody this is wrong. Please, I ask of you, I beg of you, sit with your brothers who are having difficulties, talk to them. And by the way, we don't need a counseling service. You know, Rasulullah has given us the responsibility as Muslims to be counselors. Somebody came to me in my school said, I'm coming to counsel some children. I said to him, by whom authority? Or who gave you the authority? He said, because some children are traumatized. I said to him, no. In Islam, we counsel each other. He said, how? You're not trained. I said, we are trained. Naturally. Once we say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, we're trained. He said, explain to me, he's an English guy. I said to him, our Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, one of the right of the Muslim to his brother in Islam or sister, if he seek your counsel, counsel them. فَإِذَا اسْتَنْصَحَكَ فَانْصَحُ فَإِذَا اسْتَنْصَحَكَ فَانْصَحُ The counseling is seeking advice from the person who knows his subject. So if somebody come to me to consult me about something I don't know, I will send them. He come to talk to me about something to do with South America or Guyana. I say, look, brother, it is my duty to give you the news, but I need to learn from it. I don't know about Guyana or South America, but I know somebody who knows. And then I will give them the telephone to Sheikh Umar. I'm sure Sheikh Umar will look after them well. Don't you ever turn a Muslim who come to you. Don't you ever turn even your child when he says, dad, 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 I want to talk to you. Dad, I have a question. They say, not now. Don't give me. I'm too busy. I've got work to do. Believe me, that push away of the child it will put a barrier between you and them in his heart or her heart and they will go to somebody else who will give them the wrong advice. And when they go wrong, them come crying to somebody like me and say, I don't know what did I do wrong. It's simple. You said not now. Not now. When are you going to answer? The child does not want your money. The child does not want the present you buy to him. The child wants your love. And therefore here we come to the nurturing of the children. 
The ch- nurturing of the children according to Rasulullah sallam is to love them and to care for them and to embrace them and to be close to them for seven years. And thereafter from eight to fourteen is to teach them and discipline them. And from fifteen to twenty-one is to accompany them and make them your friends. This is the teaching of the Prophet sallam. But a lot of our Muslim brothers and sisters, they don't know this. There are children who are two years old. When they pick something wrong or they break a glass, they are beaten up. They are slapped. They are belted. I have children at home, uh, in the school, they come to me and say, my father belt me. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. We don't even belt a donkey or a horse. Because Rasulullah sallam has commanded us to be gentle and kind to our animals. Our children are our responsibility. You are all responsible men and women sitting in front of me here. Please, please, when somebody you see doing what I'm saying is wrong, slapping, kicking, hitting their children, their brothers, or their partners, you must advise them to stop that. This is wrong. And there is something even worse. There are some brothers who hit their wife, and when the wife says, why are you doing this to me? Say, the Quran has commanded me. The Quran has commanded me. The Quran never commanded you to hit your wife. That's the wrong interpretation. Okay? One man was being questioned, I think, by a judge in this country, and he said, well, it is in my religion to hit my wife. The judge said to him, I don't think any religion in this world asks somebody to hit somebody. Allah doesn't ask. Allah asks you to be compassionate. And compassion requires mercy, gentleness, leniency, and absolute kindness. If you are not kind, you cannot be compassionate. So please, the family is important. We are saying it, we are going to repeat it. There are many, many conferences taking place around the country. There are a lot of lessons teaching people how to be a yani, good member of a family. If you are living with your parents, be kind to them. Look after them. Show respect to them. If you are having siblings in the house, <coughs> please, have time to sit down, talk to them, ask them their needs. What do they want? If you are the older, subhanAllah, there are some brothers living with their brothers at home. The brother who is going to college or university and you are working and you are earning and you expect your little brother, his father to give him or your mother to give him. And you don't even put your hand in your pocket. You should call your brother or sister. You don't even have to call them. You should just take their bank account every month, put them money. Why do you have to wait until they ask you? Why do you wait for your brother or sister to put their hand? The hand that gives is better than the hand that receives. If your father or mother cared for you and gave you, give your brother. This is your sibling. الأقربون أولى بالمعروف The next of kin are more deserved of your help and support. The best families is when they take care of one another. Without, I know for a fact, there are some families, يعني, the child will wake up in the morning and he goes and brush his teeth and when he comes to dress to go to school, he will find the money in his pocket. He didn't know which of his brothers put it for him. He doesn't have to go to his father or mother begging them, asking them. And the mother and father, sometimes they don't have. They have to go and look for it. They have to go and, and, and borrow it. You know, sometimes fathers go to work and they're crying because they have a bill they can't afford to pay, but yet they have to co- pay for the kid tomorrow morning to go to school. Or the child wants to go for a trip and they don't have the 20 pounds to pay it. And the brother is working or the sister is working and earning money and putting it in the bank. You're not going to bury it with you. We need to use it. And by the way, the money you have with you is a trust from Allah to you. So this is a part of the family. A family is not just living together, eating together, that's it. It's sharing responsibility with one another. So if you are living at home, you have alive parents, thank Allah. Show gratitude to him that they are alive. They say the words of the human being is the one who have neglected his parents and both of them or one of them die before they forgive him. So what are you living for? You upset them, you anger them, you annoy them, and they are angry with you. They are crossed and they die, who's going to forgive you then? Who's going to forgive you? The luckiest people are those who die before their parents. Because their parents can pray for them. Because your mother, even if she's angry with you, if you are sick, if you are lost, or if you are in difficulty, or you are dead, she will pray for you. If your parents are alive, my advice, go to them. The luckiest people whom they go to the mor- in the morning and hug their mother and say, Mother, forgive me. Hold the feet of their mother and say, Please forgive me. Embrace their father and say, please forgive me. Some people say to me, I feel shy. How could you feel shy? You find your colleague, your friend, you give them a hug, you give them a kiss, and you joke with them. You feel shy from your father? Where did you come from? You came from his back. Where did you come from? The belly of your mother. So hold your mother. Hug your mother. 
تصافحوا تعانقوا فإنه مذهب عنكم الغل do embrace one another do shake hands with one another for it is indeed easy for you to remove okay that which you carry in your heart against your brothers and sisters mm. the grudges that you carry inside will be removed most shocking I have got people who come to me and say I don't talk to my father can you believe that Omar? I don't talk to my father how dare you I'm not talk to your father oh, well I'm upset with him how, how could you be upset with your father or your mother even your brothers and sisters Allah described the hypocrites in the Quran as those who sever or cut off their links with their next of kin with their relatives if you have relatives and you are not talking to them go tonight and ask Allah to forgive you mm. and call them tomorrow morning and say please I want to see you and even if they wronged you forgive them keep the tie keep the link don't you ever have animosities the heart of the believer is the throne of the Rahman the throne of the beneficent the, pr- the throne of the creator almighty God but in it that throne as long as you do not carry grudges or hatred or animosity or envy or jealousy or any evil keep your heart clean everybody should have that kind of heart let us pray and ask Allah to make us understand the importance of the family in the western world today the family is destroyed and you know that it's coming to a position whereby we are told it doesn't matter people of the same sex can live together and create a family and if they can't have children because naturally they can't then they can adopt them Imagine if we all live that life, where are we going to adopt from? That doesn't make sense to me. And we need to be serious. This is whereby people who believe in God will stand up and say, No! I'm not compelling you what to do. You want to do that? I'm not against you. I'm not saying nothing about it. But don't tell me what I'm doing is wrong. I am a man. I am a human being. I come from Adam and Adam was from mud. But spiritually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he had a partner from himself, Hawa, and from them we have come. This is the way we are created. And we are to get married, male and female. Ya ayyuhal nasu, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, all you mankind, we have created you from a male and a female. Waja'annakum shu'uban wa qaba'il al-ta'arafu. And we have made you into families and clans and <coughs> tribes and nation so that you will get to know one another. How? Not by saying hello, how, goodbye, how are you? No. By getting married to one another. The male will marry the female. Not the other way. Mm. The male will marry the female. And you cannot put two positive to give you electricity. Not be positive and negative. Light comes from positive and negative. Nature is always male and female. Flowers have the same. Animals have the same. Have you ever seen two male donkeys <laughs> producing a child? Have you ever seen two horses? Come on. People are, yes, they say it's not politically correct. No. I am not interested in political court. I'm interested in what I believe in. I believe in God. I believe in the Quran. I believe in Rasulullah. I believe in the message that came to me. If people want to, I'm not going to force it. Nothing to do with me. La ikraha fi deen. There is nothing higher than deen. Nothing higher than religion. Nothing higher than religion. You are not supposed to compel anybody to believe in Allah. Therefore, we cannot, anybody want to do anything at Allah. If we cannot compel them to become Muslim or not, or religious or not, then we cannot compel them about anything else. They want to do whatever they want to do, they can do it. It's nothing to do with me. I'm a human being who have been given a purpose in this life. My purpose is to live according to that which was revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu I'm a slave of God. I'm a servant of God. And the Quran is my manual. In it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me to do certain things and avoid others. From that, he commanded me to worship him by getting to know him. And the only way is by following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the example of Muhammad sallam is my example. Muhammad sallam is a man, not like other men. But he got married and he had children. And he died and he's buried. This is what will happen to me. Those who say, burn your body. No, la wallahi, I don't bear my body. I bury my body. The Quran said, مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ تَرَّةً أُخْرَى From the earth we created you and to it once again we will return you. So these are things nowadays we're living. The intellectual who's deluded, who's misguided, is telling me, well, this is the right way. Not the right way. Right way for you. But not the right way for me. You should all wake up. Really wake up and think. The family is important. If the Muslim family is destroyed, 
our job in this land is finished. Our Prime Minister, may he be guided to do the right thing. He says, we want the big society, we want the family. Many people don't like that. He said, why is he interfering? He's saying the right thing. He's not saying something wrong. The family is very important. I'm glad he's married and he has children. I'm glad. Because that's the way. That's Islam. That's the way of God. That's the way of submission. That's the way of strife. That's the way of the Creator Almighty God. So may he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, allow us to thank him by showing gratitude to the people of this land. Amen. Amen. The English, the Irish, Amen. the Scottish, Amen. and the Welsh. Amen of this land. We came from Amen. different land to the land. They have opened their land for us. We are comfortable. People who came from Somalia only yesterday, they can never have it better. I walk in the street today, other than Pakistani shops, I see Somali shops. Allahu Akbar. You see? Amen. Oh, wonderful, really. I, I, I see in television, Somalis are comedians. I saw it today with Ismail and a young guy. MashaAllah. Somali is a comedian. His name is Prince Abdi. I was interviewing him earlier. If this child was growing in Magdishu, I don't know whether he will be alive or dead or having troubles and so on. Yeah? My brothers who come from Iraq, there is trouble. Pakistan, there is trouble. Afghanistan, Sudan. I only saw Sudan in Sudan. Troubles everywhere. There is troubles. But here we have peace. Let us ask Allah to allow us in this peace to identify the good that Muhammad Sallam has brought and to encourage it in the society. And the best of this is to worship Allah and to get married and to have a family and to look after that family according to the deen. May Allah guard me, and strengthen me, and give me tawfiq, and allow us all to be among those who will lead a wonderful, beautiful life. Amen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sallim. Rabbi zidna ilma wa zidna fahma wa jalna min rashidin. Rabbi zidna ilma wa zidna fahma wa jalna min rashidin. Ya Rabbi zidna ilma wa zidna fahma wa jalna min rashidin. Salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Nabiya al-Amin wa alihi wa sallim al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'abud wa iyaka nista'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين all the brothers who are not here and perhaps for one reason or another think I'm not here they're not coming please always remind everybody we don't come to the most because of somebody we come to the most because of Allah that's mm -hmm. it those who come will benefit even if you come alone and you just sit down and do the reading we do and you just leave Allah will benefit you so remind everybody we come for Allah and may Allah bless all those who are not with us tonight. Amen. Especially Mustafa and Hamza and the rest of the brothers that I can remember, not remember the name, and their friends and their companions. May Allah bless them wherever they might be. And may Allah give them tawfiq and success. Amen. And allow us all, insha'Allah, to be able to be always in the position of remembering Allah. Al-Fatiha, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm al-Din, Iyaka Na'abud wa Iyaka Nasta'in, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين نعم يو بير دي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يو بير دي ريسبونسيبيلتي اوف ميكين دعاء فور اس حمزه سيستر لا ذات يونغ جيرل شي بي جوين اون هاج امين Inshallah. You bear the responsibility of making dua Amen, for Allah. Inshallah. You bear the responsibility of making dua for the people out in Hanzo. Amen. Tonight, they want you to make dua. The Imam is in the hospital. May Allah give him shifa. Amen. Amen. There has been a group down there, uh, the uh, Murana, and they all want you to make dua. Amen. So uh, may you, Allah, will allow you to make the dua. Amen. And you fellas here. Uh, is uh, your name? Amir. Huh? Amir. Amir, you've been to the Sudan. Yeah, he was with us in Sudan. Uh, you've got you. And you remember that guy there? Uh, yes, guy. this guy. Well, that's the man of Sudan. Yeah, yeah, and a few more. And then you've got uh, Mohammed's brother here from the Sudan here. Mm. Yes, he's there. Yes, and there's somebody beside This is him. Sheikh Mohammed. This is Sheikh Mohammed's brother. Sheikh Hassan Sam. Uh, this in Islam there is no coincidence but I says this afternoon may Allah bless uh, Sheikh Hassan's son which is Muhammad I know and then his mother I've seen his mother once in all court here when the father was here yeah. 
and tonight I come here and see him. Alhamdulillah. You all must pray for him. Amen. Amen. And pray for all the fellows in the Sudan. Amen. Amen. And not only the Sudan, you pray for people for part. The, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu you, they had a man in here the night, an old man, and he says we are family. Yes, it's true. We must. You may Allah help us all. Amen. Amen. And may Allah help some of us to clean this heart of Amen. us. Amen. Because we are family, but if you like it or not, Amen. and if you deviate from that, you will see this trouble. Mm. And may Allah help us here, Daniel. Amen. And everybody at the shop there, those Amen. young Amen. girls, may Allah Amen. increase you fellas Amen. in whatever you're doing. It, uh, so here, uh, you will be an M2. Uh, may Allah protect ease in the home office. Amen. May Allah protect you here. Amen. And all the best. Dr. Khalil, the Sheikh Abu Bakr, always pray for you. Amen. Not only tonight. Every night. We always pray for you. May Allah bless you, your children, and keep you well. Yeah, we love you. And this brother, Musab, Musab. Allah protect you and protect this one here. And have we not called the Buddha to dilate and eat at the bottom which we don't like that? Amen. We torture Goshis, we torture Goshis. So when the Lord relieves his tongue, we try to peace upon the with the law. Alam Nashwa Laka Sagra. But with Dana and Kobe's rock, I live in the end of the Zara, war rock, and I like a Zikra, but in a mall, Usri Usula, and in a mall, Usri Usula, but in the Zafa rock, the Fansa, while I love Bika for God. Gassim, a lot best grandad in the world. And you fellas behind there who helps us Anas and, and your, Ahmad. your university. Amen. Allah allow you Tarek. fellas to pass your exam. Amen. Amen. And grant you success. Amen. All of us here. For the Sheikh Abu Amen. Amen. His children Amen. in the school. Amen. We must pray for Yusuf Islam. Amen. We must pray for such people. Amen. And when you pray for one individual, you pray for all. Amen. As the Sheikh says, if one to certain people, we won't be here. That's true. You all, except for those who were born here, you would have got the same story. I met an old woman today, an old woman, and she says to me, if you die here, you die with something. But if you says you die that, you die with not. I'm fortunate to be here. I mean, fortunate to be sitting beside the Sheikh Abu Bakr. So when I rejecting people, I will know on what strength I'm rejecting people. Subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Mahmoud, and all your friends from that part of the world. Amen. All those who are going to university and culture, Allah grant them success. Amen. Amen. Our fact here. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين